狐は人をたぶらかすもののけであり夜になるとしばしば美しい女に化ける幻覚や罠で獲物を誘惑しその姿を見極めようとすればたちまち狐火に紛れて消えてしまう目狐に気をつけろ国光。Kunimitsu is a nimble, deceptive fighter who uses all the trickery and illusions befitting of a ninja. While she won't be winning any brawls up close, she's extraordinarily light on her feet. When her mobility is used in conjunction with her hard hitting mix ups and tricky setups, opponents will be struggling to keep up as this mischievous fox runs rings around them in the arena. <laughs> Kunimitsu's fast backdash and Setsunagake give her unmatched ability to both create and close space. If given the chance to go into crouch or back turned, Kunimitsu has a wealth of powerful and ambiguous mix ups. Deceptive and confusing tools that a cunning player can use to both punish reckless play and open up defense. Once Kunimitsu gets the opponent in the air, there's a strong chance they'll be hitting the wall due to her excellent wall carry. A full kit of damaging block punishment tools from standing to cover any situation. Outside of crouch and back turned, Kunimitsu struggles to open up defensive players due to her weak lows. Because of her weak counter hit game and low damage pokes, Kunimitsu needs to take risks for any kind of meaningful damage. This riskiness is exacerbated by how a lot of her key moves and mix up stances are very linear, especially to sidestep right. At the time of making this guide, a lot of Kunimitsu's staple combo filler have severe hitbox issues, necessitating weaker alternatives. Playing the neutral in any fighting game can be boiled down to a rock, paper, scissors dynamic. Pressure beats whiff punishing, whiff punishing beats keep out, and keep out beats pressure. For a more detailed analysis, please see Devil Jin Essentials. Let's first take a look at Kunimitsu's approach and pressure game. Setsunagake allows Kunimitsu to quickly close the gap from a distance. Holding down both shortens the recovery and allows her to go into crouch, where she has access to powerful 50 50 mix ups, which we'll explore later. Use with caution, though, as Kunimitsu is completely vulnerable during the dash. Use sliding sweep to cancel a dash and make your approach more unpredictable. Kunimitsu's best move from Setsunagake is the Kasumi Slash, a safe mid that leads to a damaging combo on counter hits. You can also occasionally slip into Frost Slide, a fast long range low that also combos on counter hits. Do be careful though, as it's very unsafe on block. If you're way down on the life lead, a high risk, high reward maneuver is to key charge, for example, after a combo, making this a scary, unseeable mid low mix up. Be careful, as many of Kunimitsu's key moves from Setsunagake and Crouch can be sidewalked right. To discourage the opponent from stepping in the mid range, use Ensa Sogetsu. This is a safe, tracking, wall splatting mid that, while a little slow, boasts excellent range. <laughs> With Setsunagake being such a powerful approach tool, the opponent is likely to be throwing out more keep out moves than usual to snuff it out. This makes mastering whiff punishment with Kunimitsu very important, made all the more effective by her fast backdash. A general theme with Kunimitsu's mid range whiff punishment is that, while it's quite powerful, it's also very committal, with a lot of these moves being at best unsafe on block and at worst launch punishable. From range 2, i.e., two backdashes away, Raging Blizzard is super fast, can be performed from a dash, and if the opponent doesn't backroll, guarantees a climbing shadow. A Sura Blade is also a nice alternative here, being a single input, and also guarantees an Oboro Engetsu on hit. At range 1, so one backdash away, Rising Moon Slash and Rising Knee lead to a full launch. The former doesn't launch crouches, but is quite difficult for many characters to punish at max range, so is slightly less risky.
Kunimitsu is designed to be an aggressive character, but she has all the tools needed to stall the opponent's approach, thereby giving her more control over the tempo of the game and allowing her to pick her moments on when she wants to go in. Rising Moonslash doubles up as a somewhat effective keepout tool. It boasts more range than most other uppercuts, but slower whiff recovery. A less risky option is her generic down forward 4. This is very similar to Yoshimitsu's, being a fast mid with long range that can be used to frustrate opponents trying to get in on Kunimitsu. Kunai is also a very unconventional keepout tool, being a fast full screen projectile. This means that even from range 3 or further, opponents have to be very careful about how they close distance. While it is unsafe on block at mid-range, from full screen it's unpunishable. This is especially effective on infinite stages, where, combined with Kunimitsu's fast backdash, she can play a very annoying runaway game once she has the life lead. At close range, Kunimitsu's pokes aren't particularly threatening in and of themselves in terms of raw damage output. What they are very good at though is locking the opponent down so that she can start her scary mix-up game. Memaitsuki is a high mid jab string. On block you can discourage retaliation with Dark Clutch, a safe uninterruptible mid follow-up. This is linear but Ryu and Ko will catch steppers at the cost of being unsafe. While the animations are quite similar, just remember that if you block the blue blade you can punish it. Pouncing Strike is a plus on block mid. It's very slow though, so it's best used when Mamaisuki connects, making it both uninterruptible and allowing you to continue pressuring at close range. Kunimitsu's generic down forward one is nothing special in terms of range, but has powerful follow-ups. In particular, Unmuzan to Oboro Engetsu is all guaranteed on counter hits. Wall splats and the last hit can be confirmed into. While both continuations are unsafe, opponents will be hesitant to punish the second hit due to the threat of the ender. Kunimitsu's low pokes are quite lackluster. The best she has is her generic down 4, which allows her to quickly slip under highs and chip away at opponents. Manji spin low kicks can also be a good round ender, and to occasionally slip into a crouch mix up if the opponent is anticipating the mid follow up. Many of Kunimitsu's pokes can be stepped to the right, and her tracking moves are quite sluggish. This is why Lotus Blade is so important. This is a fast high mid string that catches opponents trying to step to Kunimitsu's weak side. If the opponent blocks this, you can carry on to Shrouded Lotus Blade to stop mashes. The third and fourth hits combo on counter hit and a safe on block. These are both high, but punishing them properly with a while standing move can be tricky, so it's generally best to go into crouch and use your best option from there. But this will allow Kunimitsu to get her turn back if she stops after the second hit. The string also has a final fifth hit which is unsafe on block, but only punishable by jabs. If the opponent is mashing off the fourth hit, their jab will trade with the final hit of Lotus Blade, while Kunimitsu gets a full combo. Against female characters, be careful with finishing the string though, since they can sidestep this to the left. Lotus Blade can even transition into all of Kunimitsu's mix-up stances. Cut on off the first two hits, Setsunagake off the third, and back turned which cancels the final hit, so the opponent has to stay on their toes. We'll explore these stances in more detail later. Kunimitsu's counter hit game is quite weak, but the best she has is Sakumaishi. This is a little slow and very linear, but is a mid with surprising range that gives a free climbing shadow on counter hit and forces crouch on block, so occasionally slip it in while poking. Complementing her pokes, Kunimitsu has strong close range whiff punishers such as Spinning Slash and Phoenix Tail, which are both easily accessible from a sidestep. Good times to sidestep are after down forward 1 on block and down 4 on hit. Finally, never forget the utility of a simple jab. These are indispensable in setting up Kunimitsu's powerful mix ups. <laughs> Once Kunimitsu has conditioned the opponent to sit still with her pokes, or has the element of surprise, she can open them up with her mix-ups. These are accessed from crouch and back turned. The best times to enter crouch are from a well-timed Setsunagake, the first hit of Corsa Rembu, down 4 once the opponent is conditioned to respect it, crouch jab when on the defensive, or best of all, manually. Corsa Rembu is a safe natural mid mid string. And if you stop at the first hit, Kunimitsu is left in crouch, allowing you to slip in a mixer. 
The last hit of the string is also safe on block and leads to a combo on hit, but it's very slow and interruptible, so you should only really use it in wall combos, not against big stuff. The main lows to fear from Crouch are Spinning Sweep, which is damaging but risky. This guarantees climbing shadow on hit. If the opponent techs after and you immediately go into Setsu Nagake, Kunimitsu is actually left in back turn, allowing you to continue mixing the opponent up. The safer but less rewarding low is Seneza, which is only minus 11 on block and can't be low parried due to being a weapon. This is quite slow, but on hit, and especially counter hit, allows you to continue pressuring. You have quite a few mid options to mix these lows up with. Kaizen Rengeki is safe on block and wall splint, but beware as the second hit can be ducked. This move is especially effective after Setsunagake. The first hit looks nearly identical to Kasumi Slash, allowing you to continue taking your turn on a well-conditioned opponent, especially due to the threat of the Kaizen Rengeki follow-up, which screws on counting it. Kaizen Rengeki can itself be cancelled into Setsunagake. On hit, this makes Kasumi Slash uninterruptible. Most options from Setsunagake will lose to Sidewalk Right, but a good way to keep steppers and crouchers in check is the first hit of Shigure. While the full string is a safe, natural mid-mid, the second hit tends to awkwardly whiff against Sidewalk Right, opening her up to punishment. If the opponent tries to mash in between, it will knock down or counter hit, guaranteeing a free climbing shadow. Finally, for a higher commitment mid from Crouch, Kaede is your standard unsafe launcher. Back turned is Kunimitsu's other mix up position. The best moves to enter it are Falling Hail, Kage Nade Slash, and Spiral Laceration. Falling Hail is somewhat slow and very linear, but even on block sets up a powerful mix up. Back turned down 3 will beat most options, including generic down forward 1s, and is good at keeping the opponent honest. If the opponent consistently tries to down jab, stay front facing, and go into crouch. This is an option select which allows you to both low parry and enter a crouch mix. Other moves that beat back turn down 3 such as 12 frame mids and low crushes can be punished by staying front facing and sidestepping. Once the opponent is respecting your back turned entry, you can now open them up. Back turn throws all look the same, which makes breaking them a complete guess. Mix fading chakra drop, which is broken with both hands, with Kunimitsu's generic throws, which are broken with a single hand. Mix your back turn throws with mids like Lycoris Radiata, which allows you to maintain pressure on block, and Shadow Strike if you have a strong read on a crouch. Do be careful as this is unsafe. If the opponent is consistently throwing out jab strings after your back turned entry, Sinking Thrust will knock them down for a full guaranteed combo. Kage Nade Slash is a fast jailing natural high string that leads to similar mix ups. It has one frame more recovery on block though so back turn down 3 will now trade with generic down forward 1s. It's unwieldy to use from a sidestep due to Willow the Wisp, but if stepping into the background, you can tap down to access it. Spiral Laceration is a mid-access from sidestep. The frames aren't very airtight on block, but it can be covered by Spiral Sunder to catch opponents trying to challenge you. Use with caution as this can be punished by jabs. Tenro works in a similar way except you don't need to sidestep. But the follow-up, Ura Tenro, is launch punishable on block. Neutral guarding will decrease the pushback, allowing for a more consistent punish. If this connects on counter it though, you're granted a free kunai or rage drive for a rather cool looking combo. When under pressure, Kunimitsu has a few tricks up her sleeve. Flash kick combination is all guaranteed on counter hit and comes from a jab. Be sure to confirm into the last hit as it's rather unsafe. A common down jab is also more dangerous on any character with strong mix ups from Crouch, and Kunimitsu is no exception. Rising Knee operates as a standard low crushing hop kick. Hakuen covers a lot of options, being a mid homing power crush, though it is unsafe. Nigemizu is an escape tool that's used in very specific situations. For example, it cleanly evades all of Josie's switch options from a tree in the middle. It also completely nullifies Elisa's entry from Splendid Edge into EX Darkwave mix-ups. Tobi Kage can be used to get Kunimitsu's back away from the wall once she's cornered. This is surprisingly finicky to punish since Kunimitsu is crouched while recovering, 
and the camera can go all over the place. But don't be too reckless with this. Finally, it's worth mentioning that, strictly speaking, Kunimitsu has a reversal, which is even accessible from a quick high mid-string with Cycle of Rebirth, but it's very slow to come out and should generally not be used against strong players. The moves listed here are what is essential to understanding Kunimitsu's core game plan, but she has many more useful moves based around trickery and setups. For example, Katon can be used as a high-risk, high-reward bait stance, both in the neutral and up close, while Guillotine Crow Kick is powerful when used after certain wall combos, since it evades get-up kicks, hits grounded, is plus on block, and also forces crouch. Experiment with Kunimitsu's wide array of tools, and try to develop your own unique style of ninja trickery. While Kunimitsu's crouching punishment is rather standard, her standing block punishment is well above average. Her Tensho Kaisen is a particular standout here, being a 14-frame launch punish. While moves with these kinds of motion inputs are usually very challenging to use as block punishers, this has a massive buffer window making it very practical. If your execution is on point, Raging Blizzard can also be used as a 10-frame wall splat. Kunimitsu is a character who can completely overwhelm players unfamiliar with her sheer speed and ferocious mix-ups. However, she struggles against those who know how to sidestep her pressure and fully punish her moves on block. On paper, the risk-reward is rarely in her favor. Her pokes lack damage, and her counter-hit game is weak. Any kind of meaningful damage from Kunimitsu comes with some risk. You need to know when to commit with her and how to use her speed to take the opponents by surprise. For this reason, she likely won't be making a huge impact at tournaments, but her powerful punishment and superlative movement can't be overlooked. This Kunoichi has all the tools needed to be successful at any level of play. Kunimitsu is recommended for players looking for an aggressive mobile character who enjoy dancing on the razor's edge. Thank you for watching Kunimitsu Essentials. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please consider supporting us over on Patreon. The quality on these videos wouldn't be possible without your help, so a massive thank you to all these lovely people. For just $1 a month, you can download these exclusive, beautifully put together PDFs of the scripts, gain early access to our videos, and a bunch of other goodies. This time, shoutouts to Rain, The Shooter Looter, Barrack Kruger, and T4LG4. To stay up to date on all things Salami, you can follow me over on Twitter at Aria Tayabi. Have a fantastic day everyone, and a happy 2021.